You, we all have borders and boundaries. If you stay within your borders, then God will expand your borders. Because you're being respectful to what you have. Why should God give you a new car if the one you have now looks like a trash can? We see that wisdom is exercised in the choices that we make. Let's talk about five areas, five areas where we need to use wisdom because wise choices release power in our life. First area I want to talk to you about is using wisdom in time management. You know, everybody's got the same amount of time. Every single person on the planet gets 24 hours a day. So why is it that some people accomplish so much and some people accomplish nothing? Why is it that some people are peaceful and they seem to get a fair amount done, but they enjoy the journey and other people are just frustrated and frantic and ready to tear their hair out all the time, and spending all kinds of money on stress medicine. It's all about choice. Poor time management creates stress and it drains your power. It's just kind of like we've all got a power pipe connected to God. But when we do foolish things, it's like poking holes in that power pipe and the power drains out. You have to live with margin. Margin means you leave a little time in between things to breathe, to think, to be, to enjoy. You know, you have to learn to do what's wise for you. I'm in bed every night at nine o'clock. I'm asleep by 9.30. I get up every morning at 5.30. I spend at least two or three hours with God before I go out the door because I want to be nice. <laughs> I want to act like what I say that I represent and I need a lot of help. <laughs> so in order for me to get up early and spend that time with God, which I know that I am desperate for, I have to go to bed. Now. You should see people when they ask me to go maybe like to a play or a show that starts at eight o'clock and I say, nope, can't do that. My kids tease me, mom, the street lights are coming on, you better run home. <laughs> but you know what? I don't care because I'm 67 and I feel great. And I know people that are 30 that can't do what I do. But it's not just because I'm just this super blessed, special child of God. No, I have to be careful what I eat. I know that I need to eat a lot of protein, so I have to make right choices when I eat. If I don't get my sleep at night, I am going to feel bad. And I don't want to feel bad. If you'll just begin to change some of your choices. Come on, I'm preaching better than you're acting. Okay, so I've got, you say, God, why am I feeling so bad? Well, you need to get more rest. You need to get more sleep. You need to quit drinking all the soda. You need to drink some water. So God gives you a little, you know. Uh, uh, yeah. Now here it comes. Just remember Peter in the boat. Well, I don't want to do that. <laughs> well, then stay sick. Well, there's a, there's a healer coming to town next week. I'm going to go to his meeting and get in the prayer line. Oh, come on. We need to grow up. We can't live stupid. <laughs> Philippians 1.10, Paul prayed for the church. And I'm going to pray for you this morning. Not what you might like, but what Paul prayed for the church. And this is what he said. So I pray that your love would abound yet more and more and extend to its fullest development in knowledge and all keen insight. That your love might display itself in a greater depth of acquaintance and more comprehensive discernment. This scripture is even saying that, that our love is manifested in us making wise and better choices. So that you may surely learn to sense what is vital and approve and prize what is excellent and of real value, recognizing the highest and the best and distinguishing the moral differences. 
Paul just prayed for them that they'd make good choices. Excellent choices. He didn't pray for their problems to go away. He prayed they'd make better choices. Are you with me today? If we start making better choices, then we won't have a problem every time we turn around. No, we're still going to have problems, and we still want to pray, but I don't want to live in the prayer line. Poor time management causes all kinds of problems. If you hear yourself complaining about how busy you are all the time, then change it. You want to know the truth? I got tired of hearing myself talk about how busy I was. And I'm frankly tired of hearing other people talk about how busy they are. How have you been, brother? Busy. Where have you been, sister? Busy. It's like, if that's all we have to say about our life, that's pretty sad. Let's talk about wisdom and finances. The pressure of debt, the fear of money is terrible. I want to encourage you to get out of debt. And do not just go to some miracle debt cancellation church service. <laughs> Pay your credit cards off. Use them for convenience and not to buy stuff you don't have the money to pay for. Now, I know this is hard for some of you because you've already got a mess. And I know how you feel. We had one too at one time. When Dave and I had only been married a few years, he didn't, he didn't really want credit cards. I talked him into it. The power of a woman is amazing. <laughs> and sure enough, pretty soon we had big balances on these credit cards and they were pressuring us. You pay the smallest amount you can every month. The next month you owe more than you did the last month. So he just made a firm decision that we were going to pay them off. And I'm telling you the truth, for two or three years, we had to live very, 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 very lean. And we were already living pretty lean to start with. And ever since that, we've never had a balance on a credit card that we didn't pay off at the end of the month. And I don't tell you that bragging. I don't tell you that to make you feel bad because I know that's not the case for a lot of you. But I want you to know that it's possible for you. And if you don't believe it's possible, then you'll never do it. It's possible for you to save money and pay cash for what you want. It's possible. You can save money and pay cash for your next automobile. You're gone. You can save money for that. It's so easy to just say, charge it, but the bill is going to come. Do I need to be in this section? The bill is going to come. I don't want to see people in a situation where if they lose their job, they have to just get afraid and panic. Have an emergency fund where you've got some money in it. Don't spend every penny you have. Dave has a good little common sense way of managing money. He has a 12th grade education, but he's one of the best money managers I've ever seen. It's not complicated. He didn't have to go take a college course on managing money. Here's his philosophy. Save sp some, spend some, give some. Isn't that hard? Now, I'm up here. <laughs> he said, within your means. Well, yes, obviously. Within your means. Save some, spend some, give some within your means. You, we all have borders and boundaries. If you stay within your borders, then God will expand your borders. Because you're being respectful to what you have. Why should God give you a new car if the one you have now looks like a trash can? Amen? You might think, well, this isn't very spiritual. Well, yeah, it is. I'm teaching you how to live. I'm teaching you how to get the pressure out of your life. These are all biblical principles. The Bible talks about saving enough that you can give an inheritance to your children's children. 
It's that a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. You shouldn't have to be afraid of what you're going to do when, when you retire. And if you don't do something now, everybody say now. now. If you don't do something now, say now. now. Then you will. Someday you're going to get old. <laughs> so you need to do something now. I don't say this bragging in any way, shape, or form, but just to let you know what's possible if you'll have the patience to wait. See, nobody's ever going to stay out of debt if they don't have the patience to wait. Amen? Patience is power. When you can be patient, that's a powerful life. The only money that we have ever borrowed in this ministry, and we, we actually didn't borrow it, we made payments on a $500 copy machine that we bought from a Baptist church in the very beginning of our ministry. And we made $10, $50 payments on that. And that's the only thing in 30 years of ministry that we've ever borrowed. Why? I'll be honest with you and tell you, I probably would have borrowed because I'm not as patient as Dave. But Dave said, nope, we're not going to borrow. And he'd have these little accounts where he would start saving for a building. And he'd see sometimes three and four and five and six years down the road, something that was in his heart that he thought we were going to need later. And he'd, he'd have little accounts. When he was a kid, he kept his money in his socks. He'd always have this sock in his drawer with money in it. He would save some, spend some, give some. When he was 16, he paid cash for his first car because he planned for it probably from the time he was a little kid. Some people don't know how to save everything, they spend everything. Some people don't give anything. The Bible says plainly in Malachi 3, do not rob God by withholding your, your tithes and offerings. Somebody right away says, well, I don't believe in tithing. That's Old Testament. Why, you silly thing, dude. You're just trying to get out of giving. <laughs> I mean, if they could tithe under the law, what would, should we be doing under grace? I don't believe in tithing either. I believe in going way beyond that. <laughs> Bring all the tithe, the whole tenth of your income, into the storehouse. There might be meat in my house. That means give to the places where you're taught and you, and you worship. Put your finances into a storehouse, a spiritual place, where when other people come to that place for help, there's help there for them. What am I supposed to do when a woman walks in our front door at work and she's got her three kids with her and she's crying? My husband just ran off and left me. I just got evicted. I can't feed my babies. Can you help me? Am I supposed to say, no, sorry, we don't have enough set aside to do that? Well, of course not. The Bible says that we should be prepared to give into every good work. Every good work. And the only way you can do that is if you plan for it ahead of time. Now listen, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. Now listen to this. And see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing so great that you cannot contain it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And all nations shall call you blessed. Now you know what? How many of you believe the Bible? Every hand's up. Now I wonder what would happen if I said, how many of you tithe? There's actually more Christians who don't than do, you know. Actually, statistically, they say, whoever they are, that only about 20% of Christians 
tithe. But we all believe the Bible. Okay, so why don't we do that? What an awesome promise. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. I will open the windows of heaven. If you don't give God that 10%, the devil's going to steal it. Hello? If you don't give God that 10%, the devil's going to steal it. And if you do give it to God, then the 90% that you've got left that he lets you keep will go a lot further than 100% would have if you kept it. Now, you can believe that or not believe it, but it's in there. Spend some of your money. Some people don't know how to spend money. They have this weird attitude, I can do without. Well, I can do without. Well, I can do without. Then they're jealous and resentful of what everybody else has, and they get this martyr attitude. Come on, go buy yourself something if you want to. But make sure that you're saving some and giving some. Don't spend it all, but spend some. Don't save it all for a rainy day. Enjoy some of it today. Wisdom in your mouth. <laughs> Boy, we could take off on that one, couldn't we? The power of life and death is in the tongue. Those who indulge it shall eat the fruit of it, rather for life or death. You can make yourself miserable or happy just by the words that you speak. There's so many great scriptures about the Bible. A right answer at the appropriate time gives man great joy. I don't really have time to teach on that because I really want to spend a few minutes on this next one and you're just going to have to forgive me if I go five minutes over, you'll get your hamburger soon. <laughs> or whatever it is your little belly is aching for. Let's talk for a minute about the foolishness of adultery. Hmm. Proverbs 6.32. Some kind of scares me sometimes when people are that quiet. <laughs> but whoever commits adultery with a woman lacks heart and understanding, moral principle and prudence. He who does it is destroying his own life. <laughs> now why would anybody do that? Because they felt like it. Lust, a feeling. Dave and I laughed and it, it was cute and funny, but it was also precious. A friend of ours, our son recently graduated from Teen Challenge. He'd been having a problem with drugs and he did so well in the program and they taught him a lot of things. And one of the things they really taught him was how to flee from temptation. <laughs> And they must depress that one a lot. Flee from temptation. When you get out of here, don't flirt with temptation. Flee from temptation. So one day he and his mother stopped at a, a gas station in a little 7-Eleven convenience store. And she went in to get something to drink. And he stayed outside putting the gas in the car. And this carload full of pretty girls pulled up and started flirting with him. He ran into the 7-Eleven where, where his mother was at. <laughs> and she said, what's the matter? He said, I'm fleeing. <laughs> she said, what do you mean you're fleeing? <laughs> I mean, that's just what he said. I'm fleeing. He had had that put in his head, flee from temptation, flee from temptation. And he literally ran from those girls. <laughs> and maybe some of us adults need to run. Use wisdom. If you've got a wife at home and three little kids, and maybe your wife's gained 10 pounds from having your three kids. <laughs> you don't need to be carpooling every day with a 25-year-old cutie with a short skirt and a low blouse. <laughs> Why? It's just not wisdom. There's so many things like that. Oh, I'll, I'll never have a problem. Come on, don't trust yourself too much. 
you do have a flesh. And if you start to feel the least little bit of temptation, people don't fall into adultery, they walk into it. We don't fall into sin. I, I hate that. Well, I fell into sin. No, you walked into it. Woo! Now, okay, now look, let me rewind and be nice. <laughs> if you're in debt, there's no condemnation, you can get out. If anybody watching my television or anybody in the building, if you've been involved in adultery, it's not the end of your life, you can be forgiven. But to be honest with you, it's kind of proven that sometimes once somebody gives in to a temptation like that, it even makes it more difficult the next time. So I am preaching this to you for your benefit because people usually don't like to get up and say stuff like this, but somebody has to say it. And I haven't said this in a while, so I'll say it. If you're a woman of God, you need to be careful how you dress. You don't need to be a temptation. Your clothes don't need to be too thin, too tight, too high, too low. Amen? Go look at yourself in the mirror and don't say, do I look sexy? Say, do I represent God? And is he going to be pleased with the way I look? Maybe I should just go a little further. You know, when you put your, your skirt on, don't just look like this. <laughs> Bend over and take a look. I don't know how else to do it. It's like people don't think. It's like it might look good when you're like this or, you know, if you got, a, I mean, like this. I still have to be careful. I've formed a habit when I bend over, I just do this. Well, I never thought of that. Well, maybe your mama didn't tell you, so I'm taking the role this morning, if you don't mind, and I'm saying. Flee from temptation. Abstain from every appearance of evil, the Bible says. What else have I got left here to throw at you guys? <laughs> Something, I'm sure. Last thing I want to talk about is friends. The five things have been time, money, word, sex. Hey, be careful what you look at. Friends and companions, I think the people we hang out with, the people we call our friends, the people that we associate with are so much more important than what we can ever begin to imagine. <laughs> iron sharpens iron. Be with somebody that's going to, just by their lifestyle, is going to encourage you and provoke you to come up higher and be more excellent. You know, one of the girls that works for me, and I spend a lot of time with her. She says to me, just being around you has made me a better person. Now, that's a great compliment. And I think that's the kind of compliments we all should have. Just being around you has made me a better person. It's made me more excellent. It's helped me in the way that I treat people. If you're around somebody that's rude, you're going to think it's okay to be rude. But if you're around people with good manners, pretty soon you'll get better manners. Some of you can improve your life drastically just by choosing some better friends. And you'd be better off to stay home alone and be lonely than to be with wrong people. Amen. Everybody shout out real loud, wisdom! Making wise choices brings peace to our lives. 
Wisdom makes us successful in our relationships, valuable at work, and stable in our finances. It affects every aspect of living. So there's no reason why we should not seek wisdom because it is, as the Bible says, one of the most valuable things in the world. Well, we're in Rwanda at the Kingdom Education Center where we're being permitted by the grace of God to work with these beautiful children here. And one of the things that they're teaching the children is that the healing of a nation begins with receiving the love of Jesus Christ and by forgiving. That's the way we can help every nation that's hurting, is by teaching them to love God and to love other people. And the best place to start is with the children. Thank you so much for helping us give these children a new life so this can be a brand new nation. God bless you. Do you ever feel like God is angry with you? This is a widespread problem both inside the church and outside of the church. An understanding of God's love will set you free from guilt and condemnation. So many people run from God in fear rather than running toward God. Decide right now that you won't spend another day in fear and know that God is not mad at you. Bestel nu God is niet boos op jou via onze website joy-meyer.nl of bel 026 2022 100. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meijer.nl/slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.